In this part 2 movie, you create and assign materials to various scene objects. You will start with the grounds. The larger surface is to be mapped with a repetitive square pattern, and the smaller center area will be mapped with the stadium logo. Let's take a look at the larger area first. Press M to go to the Slate Material Editor and create a new AND material. Double-click it and name it Ground. From the template list, choose Glossy Finish. This will make it reflective to other objects in the scene. Drag the Diffuse Color node out and choose Standard Bitmap. Browse for and select the square.png image you downloaded for this tutorial. Make sure the material is set to show in the viewport and drag its output node to apply it to the yellow ground surface. It needs to be tiled a number of times. The surface was originally created as a plane primitive with the 26 by 26 division setup. Apply a UVW map modifier and set its styling to 26 by 26. Get closer to the center. Move one of the light cycles closer to the surface you're working on and do a test render. Notice the noise patterns in the stadium light's reflections. Although these could look interesting in some situations, this is not one of them. To get a sharper reflection, increase the glossiness to 1 and try again. That's better, but the reflection is a bit too strong. There are various ways to decrease the reflection strength. The method you will use here is to make the dark areas more transparent. Use Shift Move to copy the bitmap node. Double click its titled area to see its parameters. If you want, double click its icon to see it better. Connect its output node to the cutout map. A cutout map makes black areas transparent and white areas opaque. Anything in between becomes semi transparent. At this time, though, the black areas are so transparent they're as good as holes and no reflections would show. Scroll down to the Output rollout and expand it. Set the RGB offset to 0.3. This reduces the contrast. Notice how the black areas are now a dull gray. Render again, and notice how the reflections are now subdued. However, depending on your view angle, the reflection strength may not be as evident. From higher grounds, it needs to be increased a bit. Try increasing the zero degree reflectivity value to 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 and render again. To create a material for the centerpiece, select all the nodes that make the material just created and make a copy using Shift Move. Double-click the new material and make it show in the viewport and name it Stadium Logo. Change the bitmap assignments to use center.png instead of the previous square image and apply the material to the center piece. Because the grounds are semi-transparent, you can now have multiple levels of gameplay. Transparency can be fine-tuned by adjusting the contrast of the cutout map. Next, you create materials for the light cycles. To keep things tidy, rename View 1 in the Slate Material Editor to Stadium. Right-click to create a new view and name it Cycles. Drag in a multi-sub-object node into the new view. If you recall, the wheels and the body of each light cycle are made of polygons separated by face IDs. Each number in the multi-sub-object material corresponds to a face ID. This means faces set to ID number 1 will take on the properties of sub-material number 1, face ID number 2 the properties of sub-material number 2, and so on. There are no faces applied with an ID higher than number 4, so you can set the number of submaterials to 4. You can also name the material Light Cycle Blue. We'll start with that one. Consider the Light Cycle wheels. 
they have two sets of IDs, one and two. ID number one is a reflective metal part on the wheel, and ID number two is the glowing part. This is also true for the body of the light cycle. Apply the multi sub object material to the front wheel of the blue light cycle. Drag in an A and D material and connect it to the first sub material. Here you need the reflective chromic material for the metal part of the light cycle. Double click the A and D material and select the chrome template from the list. If you want, collapse the A and D node so that it doesn't take too much space in the viewer. Next, Drag in a second A and D material and connect it to the input node of submaterial number 2. This one will be used for the blue glow. Double click the new submaterial node to view its properties. Set the template to matte finish. It doesn't need to be reflective as it will be glowing. Change the diffuse color to a blue color that you like. Scroll down and expand the self illumination rollout and enable that option. Copy the diffuse color to the self-illumination color swatch. Do a test render. The wheel shows off the new materials and even though the blue material appears bright, it is not really glowing. A lot of the times, glow effects are done in post, but you can make them part of the 3ds Max render process. Go to the Render Scene dialog and choose the Renderer tab. Scroll down to the Camera Shaders group and enable the Glare Output Shader. Render the scene again. Bright spots and self-illuminated materials now appear to glow. Increase the luminance value of the blue material to 2 and try again. The glow is now stronger. Make sure you apply the multi-sub material to the back wheel and the body of the light cycle. Create A and D materials for the cockpit and the under tray of the light cycle. Both are dark in this movie, with the under tray having more of a matte finish, but you can have fun with your own ideas. To make a material for the second light cycle, make a copy of the multi sub object material and rename it Light Cycle Yellow. Change its diffuse and self illumination colors from blue to a yellow that you like and apply the material to the yellow light cycle. Fine-tune the colors. Try a sharp orange and see if you like the effect better. Adjust the luminance values on both light cycle materials until you get an effect that you like. If you want, go back to the stadium materials and use the same technique to make them glow. Start by instancing the diffuse maps as self-illumination maps and then adjust the luminance value to get an effect that you like. Also, disable show map in viewport on the main ground. This will make it easier to see the path you will constrain the light cycles to. This is exactly what you will be doing in the next movie.